Health authorities concerned about a worrying trend in childhood obesity. Stakeholders place renewed focus on the destination wedding and honeymoon markets, and Justice Victoria Charles Clark frustrated over tardiness in prosecution of matters by the DPP's office. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. First up, Dominica's youth are trending towards a worrying level of obesity. The observation comes from medical professionals carrying out a body mass index BMI program among school children in Dominica. BMI is a measure of body fat based on your weight in relation to your height. BMI can be used to screen for weight categories that may lead to health problems. While not revealing any statistics, Nurse Joan Henry, coordinator of the BMI program, says there are some disturbing results from the assessments carried out thus far. Our children are overweight. Our children, primary, secondary, they are overweight. All the information we're gathering is going to be analyzed by the Health Information Unit in the Ministry of Health and then the report will be written. And Dr. Um, Rhonda McIntyre, she was the one who started with the first of the BMI and she continues, even if she's not with government, to be interested in the program. So that result, when analyzed, will be shared with her and the program that needs to be put in place will be put in place because not all children with, um, weight over, who, weight over, who are overweight may be due to dietary. There may be other things, so we are considering it a very important program. Nurse Henry, while applauding moves to assess the children's vision and weight, would like to see a more holistic assessment of their overall health. I and weight important, and we also notice in some children are not hearing very well. So maybe you need to have, we might have to have something to the hearing program to have the child's total health analyzed and to know where we're going from there as a nation. The most recent screening for the BMI program started last year December with initial screening for the I Can See Clearly program. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. To the courts now where the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions has come under fire from High Court Judge Victoria Charles Clark. The judge has expressed frustration that the DPP's office appeared to be tardy in its work and the prosecution of matters. As journalist Carlisle John Baptist tells us, since the murder trial of Rudy Jr. Jones, the court is yet to begin any new matter to the frustration of the judge. In fact, the retrial of Sherman Webb was to have started over a week ago, but because of the illness of defense counsel Peter Aline, that matter has been pushed back. The state then set June 13, 2017, for the trial of Lyndon St. Louis, who was charged with causing death by dangerous driving. However, the DPP filed a notice of discontinuance in the matter at 11.18 a.m. on June 12, 2017. Another matter which was set for trial as a replacement, Daniel Bani's murder trial, would have not commenced after the judge was told that the lawyer having conduct of the case was sick. Not amused, she said that the defense in the matter was ready and the DPP's office, which has a battery of lawyers, yet again is not ready and is asking for an adjournment. That, she said, was unacceptable since the office of the DPP has a number of lawyers who should be able to take control of the matter. DPP Baptiste, in defense, told the court that the office cannot be blamed for the delay in the Daniel Barnes murder trial since he has had difficulties at least four different lawyers who had conduct of the matter. She said that although her office is working under difficult constraints with limited resources at its disposal, they are committed to the speedy trial of all accused. On the tourism scene, tourism authorities have pledged to invest in expanding the country's destination wedding and honeymoon market. 
Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Tourism, Corinne Prevo, told a recent seminar for Roman service providers that improvements to sites are on the cards to complement destination weddings here. DDA will continue to provide support through marketing and other forms of collaboration. The Ministry of Tourism is also working on developing the infrastructure, which will be important for the services that you provide. So we want to ensure that the sites and attractions that you use for destination weddings are accessible, that the facilities are available, that the place is beautiful, that it is kept clean, and this is our responsibility and we continue to work on that. In terms of legislation, government has improved the legislation to make it more convenient to obtain marriage licenses. So I know from my previous stint in the Ministry of Social Services that we will work with you to assist your, your clients to ensure that you can get a marriage license within a, a reasonable time. Same day as a matter of fact, is actually possible. Prevo says it's also her ministry's intention to develop new sites. There are some sites that we are aware of, but there are lots of new places in Dominica, lots of exciting places to discover. So we encourage you to work in Discover Dominica Authority. The Ministry of Tourism stands ready to support you, to provide additional information for sites. If there are sites that you are utilizing and you realize that there are things that need to be done to improve the site, just bring it to our attention and we'll work on it as quickly as possible. Meantime, providers in the wedding and honeymoon markets say they are positioning themselves to take advantage of the multi-billion dollar sector. Pamela Richards Sorendo of Elite Events is one of them. She has worked in the local travel industry for some 16 years and says cruise and stayover visitors alike are increasingly interested in a destination wedding on island. We have had a few of those, but we, we have a lot of overnighters as well because because you come to them, you get this in one day, you still need a day or two to have your wedding. So when cruise um, clients you know, ask, inquire from us. We tell them you can come, come on another time, come on overnight, because you need one or two days on the island to get the process going. But they have a really huge interest in coming down here. And we've seen that the younger people, the millennials, they, they really want, they don't want the big church wedding as it always was. They want to, they want a different experience. They want to come and experience an island, the, the, the local life, the food that enhances the whole wedding experience for the new wedding um, clients now. For wedding planner Natalie Marshall Joseph, it's important that those involved in the industry stay updated with technology. Some of us may say, well, I'm not technologically savvy, but that may just hurt our business. So we need to get ourselves equipped, knowledgeable, and also certification is also very important. Um, it will assist us to in refining the product that Dominica has to offer, because Dominica is a beautiful island, very, very beautiful. and. Um, what the, the international market is looking for is not what we are used to at home, so to speak. So when I say that, I mean that, okay, the way we do stuff and we figure, okay, it's good so, the international market, that is not what they are expecting. So it's the responsibility of every service provider on the ground to refine your skill, to improve your skill, get rid of that it good so mentality. This is what we are hoping that Dominica can be branded as, and it is possible to be branded Dominica, the romance destination of the world, because of course we have beautiful sites. The seminar touched on how romance service providers can use social media effectively to market themselves. Jody's Sweet Arts is among the popular cake caterers that has pushed its profile through social media. I feel like um, all the information that was given to us will be helpful because each and every one of us as service providers is a representative of Dominica to the wider world. So whatever service it is that we are able to provide to our brides and our couples is a representation of Dominica as an entire package. I'm encouraged by all the new people who have started um, decorating kicks as well. I, I go on, I look at the pictures and I love art as a whole. So I'm encouraged and humbled as a whole to be able to participate and to practice my skill and my art. In other news, caretaker for the Salisbury constituency, Nichols Shanks Esprit, refutes claims by political opponents that the Dominica Labour Party administration is paying inadequate attention to its development needs. Esprit says of $300,000 provided to each constituency, significant amounts went to housing assistance, associated labor, 
small business support, roadworks and reconstruction of a river crossing in the Salisbury constituency. We also recently spent $378,000 in doing some road repairs to the Salisbury Village Road, uh, some concrete and some asphalt patching. We did not do anything from the bus stop up to the clinic because pretty soon the Wasco will be engaging in the replacement of the badly corroded pipes from the clinic down to the bus stop. After this is done, we would reinstate the road. So that's the reason why we did not do any major road works in that part of the area. The tune of the project for the Wasco for the replacement of the pipe is $369,000. As we speak, a brand new 30,000 gallon tank gallon tank is being constructed in Monrachet to the tune of $338,000. So these are things happening. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, former city council member weighs in on roadworks undertaken by the Ministry of Tourism. That and more when we return. Thanks for staying with us. Independence celebrations, the World Creole Music Festival, Carnival, and Jazz and Creole, among a number of calendar events likely to be enhanced for reunion year 2018. Organizers are hoping to have at least one major activity each month of reunion year. We're hoping that these events can even be bigger, more spectacular, more attractive. That's what we're hoping for. Um, maybe some of the community festivals like the Girardel Flower Show, which hasn't taken place maybe for uh, two, two or three years or so, can be held during that year in a big way. And of course, your traditional community festivals like Isidore, and then you have things like the Rabbit Festival, you know, the, the, the Goat Festival, the, you know, there's so many of them across the island. And your standard major events, carnival, festivals, Carnival, Dom Festa, Emancipation, independence and even around the religious festivals as well, Easter, Christmas, there are always things. There's a say we now show at the Atkinson community. There's a praise festival every year. Praise festival every year as part of the independence celebrations and we hope to have a, hopefully a special ecumenical service that brings together all the various religions in a praise service, hopefully a big gospel festival as well. A special appeal has been issued to Dominicans overseas to prepare to visit home for Reunion 2018 in celebration of Dominica's 40th anniversary of independence. If every single Dominican that lives overseas can come down at some point during the year, whether it's for Carnival or, or summertime or Independence Christmas, um, we would be very, very pleased about that participation. Lawrence says visiting and resident Dominicans can participate in beautification projects and organizing community events. All age groups are encouraged to participate in reunion activities. Next week is the deadline for submission of a reunion theme and logo for next year's reunion celebrations. The year-long event is meant to encourage tourism, promote cultural, economic, and educational activities and help strengthen national identity and pride. In more news, former Roseau City Councillor Emil Deputer is pleased with ongoing roadworks being undertaken by the Ministry of Tourism and Urban Renewal. Kennedy Avenue from its intersection with Independence Street to Great George Street is presently being upgraded to include improved sidewalks and drains. The $229,000 project is being executed by contracting firm Green Rose Demolition and Construction. I think it is a, a positive thing because another, uh, again, there's a lot of things that we do not know behind the scenes, but a lot of the cruise ships that we try to attract to come to Dominica will not come for things that we may seem as petty or trivial, but if you haven't got wheelchair accessible sidewalks, some of the ships will decide they're not coming because of that. So I think that is a, a positive thing that is being done, that, the, that we, we improve in on our sidewalks. 
Meantime, the Ministry of Public Works says it expects to begin phase two of the Roseau Enhancement Project soon. Under phase two, construction of a river defense wall as well as the rehabilitation of three streets in Roseau, namely Great George Street, King George the Fifth Street, and Independent Street. The businessman says the ongoing works are critical for improving public safety and developing tourism. Right there on Cork Street, I've seen many people fall with the cobblestone sidewalks and that sort of thing, right? Or with unevenness of the sidewalk or with a hole in the sidewalk that somebody maybe never saw, right? <coughs> and then that can create a problem. You do not want a person to come from the cruise ship and successfully sue the island of Dominica because they fell down on a, on a sidewalk. You do not want a situation where somebody who is wheelchair bound will write to the cruise ship and say, you all sent me to an island and I couldn't even enjoy the island, whatever it is, because, because these people write. They may not be able to walk, but they write, right? And then when they start to write, the cruise ships then decide they're back in order. And Prime Minister Skerritt has welcomed the opportunity that the Leadership Development Programme affords the region. The Prime Minister believes the programme which is ongoing here this week can strengthen the capacity of the public sector to play its critical role in policy and programme formulation and implementation. According to the Prime Minister, this enables governments to propel their countries to newer and higher levels of development. The Honourable Catherine Daniel delivered the Prime Minister's address at Monday's cocktail reception at the State House. In pursuing these roles, the public sector must be cost effective and set the standards for service delivery, transparency, public accountability and integrity. The public sector must strive for a level of excellence that sets it above the standards and performance of the private sector. And on the lighter side of things, a special moment at State House on Monday night for Senior Manager of Government's ICT Unit and a Public Officer for 2015, Germain Jean-Pierre. As an alumni of the Caribbean Leadership Project, Leadership Development Program, Jean-Pierre attended the cocktail reception at State House for Cohort 10. She completed the program as part of Cohort 5. While we're here in Dominica, we thought we'd take the opportunity to present the certificate of completion to... Game Changer, now every court has a name, Game Changer from Court 5, Mrs. Germaine Joël Jean-Pierre. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. First up in sports, FIBA's 3-on-3 three -three basketball coordinator, Nestor Rodriguez, says he liked the aggression the Dominican athletes showed during the game. On Tuesday, a group of basketballers here participated in a 3-on-3 three -three basketball workshop, which culminated in a mini-competition. I'll be honest with you, they played a compressed version of, a, of an official event. We only had two hours because of the sunlight, so they only got like five minutes to rest between games. And in the, even in the finals, they were going at it like it was the, the, the first game that they played. So from my perspective, um, and I'm, I've been telling that since 2011, is that the Caribbean, they, we have a lot of raw talent. Because of the weather, we don't get tired. This is, a, a, like I said, a format. So you go like, play only half court, you don't have to play the full court. So it's easier for them, for us in the Caribbean, to, to pick up the game. He says the crop of athletes he worked with displayed a lot of promise. What I saw here is that they have a lot of talent, a lot of talent. They just need to practice uh, the, the rules to understand the game. This was the first time and people realized that in the end they were making plays, they were making screens, they were cutting, they were starting to feel, to feel the game differently. So this is the main reason why we're doing this with 3x3 in FIBA. It's just try to create another avenue for, for players to, to be able to practice again, uh, now that it was included on, in the Olympic program. So uh, we hope that this type of events, that these workshops, will help us advance 
our discipline and, and finally get it like running and get some traction in the Caribbean. Meantime, Falcons Premier League player Ramal Cabon was pleased with 3 on 3's introduction here. It was an interesting experience, although I've played this sort of basketball once before as a team. But um, it is refreshing for a change of pace. You know, it's a good introduction to the country where we can have a more professional style of half-court basketball. And it's good that we can, you know, step away from what we know and try some new stuff. But I find that the overseas um, quality is a little bit higher because they've been exposed to it prior to us. So they have the experience in, you know, the rules and how everything goes as, as opposed to us where just, we just get introduced to it. And some of us still don't really know it, we're just going off instinct and we still make mistakes along the way but it's a learning process. In the final match of the 3-on-3 three three competition, Falcons won 10-9 against Buckets. Next up, the Gold Coast 2018 Queens Battle arrived in Dominica on Wednesday and its delegation received a warm Dominican welcome at the Douglas Charles Airport. Honorary legal advisor to the Commonwealth Games Federation, Sandra Osborne, says the battle would have covered over 300,000 kilometers by the time it has ended its journey. The battle um, began its journey on the 13th of March this year, 2017, at Buckingham Palace, when Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth put a message in the battle, and it will continue after the Caribbean. It will go into the Americas and then on to Europe, Asia and then Oceania and finally um, to Australia. Um, it will take 388 days to make the journey, the last hundred of which will be in Australia. Um, and it will have covered 330,000 kilometers by the time it has, um, you know, it has completed that journey. Meanwhile, media liaison officer Kate Shaw says the welcome here was the loudest they've received so far. We are thrilled to be here in Dominica. It was a very loud welcome, I think the loudest that we've had so far here in the Caribbean. So we've just come from Barbados. We uh, have traveled through Africa and we're now in our Caribbean region. So we started in Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Barbados, and now we're here in Dominica. Next is Antigua and Barbuda. Meantime, the Flo DABA League continues on Thursday with two first division matches, weather permitting. Game one is scheduled for 7 p.m. and will feature Massey United Insurance Sharks versus LA Knights. At 9, the Calvadaro Hurricanes will go head to head with Interschool. Both games will be played at the St. Joseph Hardcourt. On to primary school sports, Casa Bruce and Sufre have topped their zones following the end of round two of the 2017 Primary Schools Cricket Festival on Tuesday. In first position, we had Sufre with 12 points, followed by Mont Prosper 7, Trafalgar 6, Newtown 3 and St. Luke's 1. Meantime, in the southeast district, we had Casa Bruce finishing on top with 12 points, Jones Beaupere next on 9, San Silver 6 points, Grand for 3, and Mon John Delicis combined 0. The top two teams from each district will advance to the round of 16, which begins on Friday. Next up, the intermediate round of the 2017 Primary Schools Netball Division 2 resumes on Thursday at four venues. At Margot, we will see competition among the Sinicu, Casabruce, Calibishi and Woodford Hill schools. The Grammar School Hard Court will be the grounds for the games featuring Grand Bay A-Team, Tetmon, Mon Prosper and Girardel Primary Schools. At Portsmouth, Clifton and Savan Pie combined, Caleb John Laura, Massac and Penville. Finally, the Cooley Bistry, Salisbury, St. Martin and Goodwill schools will convene at Salisbury Primary School for games there. All matches begin at 2 p.m. at the respective venues. Sports continues with this item where one local cricket club is now better equipped to train budding cricketers here, complements three former national players. Recently, former West Indies player Adam Sanford, Balti Watt and Vernon Dumas do donated a number of cricket gears to Stars Cricket Academy to assist the young cricketers there. Coach of the Academy's Rosa Extension, Augustine Pascal, says the cricket gear came at a crucial time. We've been running this academy for basically um, close to about a year and a half. And some of the, the, the things I, I noticed that was lacking in, in training or, or teaching cricket skills to the young boys is that at, at a certain point, um, they felt, the without saying anything to me, that was my own, own observation. They felt um, it wasn't challenging enough. I'm very, very, very elated about that because I know right now I can extend um, the little knowledge I have in terms of teaching some of the bigger boys that, that have graduated, so to speak, from, 
using the softball and the plastic equipments to harder balls. What we have seen too is we have seen some of the smaller boys too, even at that tender age of like seven or eight years, they have already made the other step. Meantime, Stefan Pascal had this to say to the former national players. On behalf of the Stars Academy, I would like to thank Mr. Adam Sanford, Mr. Vernon Dumas and Mr. Baltiwat for making this kind of contribution to our development of Stars Academy. Once again, thanks and thanks and also thanks to the media. The donation included sets of balls, helmet pads and wicket keeping gear. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. Coming up, the weather report. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am Janet McPherson. Infrared satellite imagery today showed this broad area of deep convection associated with a tropical wave, which continued to affect the area today. Visible satellite imagery today showed this broad area of cloudiness with embedded thunderstorm cells, which resulted in cloudy to overcast skies across parts of the island chain today. Radar imagery indicated moderate to heavy showers, mainly across the central to southern portion of the region. The weather for tonight, cloudy to overcast, with showers and a possible isolated thunderstorms. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks are advised to be vigilant and to continue to exercise caution. The weather conditions for tomorrow, cloudy with showers. Seas tomorrow, moderating open water, waves peaking up to 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers, particularly on the east coast, are advised to exercise caution. Looking ahead for the next three days, tomorrow, cloudy skies and some showers are expected, with a general improvement expected by late afternoon and into the weekend. Throughout the Caribbean tomorrow, Partly cloudy to cloudy skies and scattered showers are expected across most of the island chain with thunderstorm activity across the southern portion of the region. On the international cities forecast, clear skies are expected in New York and London, thunderstorm activity for Miami and Caracas, and rain expected in Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow at 5.34 a.m. and the sunset at 6.37 p.m. For up-to-date weather information, please visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Health authorities concerned about a worrying trend in childhood obesity. Stakeholders place renewed focus on the destination wedding and honeymoon market. And Justice Victoria Charles Clark frustrated over tardiness in prosecution of matters by the DPP's office. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Idona Jean-Baptiste. To all our viewers, thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.